life as far as we know currently only exists on Earth in the solar system. But there are places with potential, like Europa and Enceladus, which have an ocean under the icy surface and have an energy source. They might also have life. Still, life from Earth is inability to contaminate space. And what is meant by contamination is that life from Earth could come in contact with terrestrial life and possibly use its resources more efficiently and in turn kill off the alien life on whatever place it exists in the solar system. The reason why this contamination could happen is because amazingly there are organisms that can even withstand the harshness of the vacuum of space. So far we only know of one such animal and that is tardigrade or water bear. This animal is microscopic and it lives everywhere, in the driest deserts and in the coldest places on Earth, such as Antarctica. This tiny surviving beast can withstand temperatures near the absolute zero, which is minus 272 Celsius, or temperatures as hot as 150 Celsius. They can also withstand pressures several times greater than the pressure at the deepest part of the ocean. They can do all that by curling up into a ball, and with the help of special proteins, it can keep its cellular structure going for many years. And as expected, they can survive the harshness of space. If they somehow got onto one of our rovers or landers on Mars, then all these water bears would need is a single drop of water for them to be revived from that state, although it is unlikely that they could survive for much longer. Still, we are talking about an animal here. There are also many single-celled organisms or bacteria that can survive the vacuum of space. The scary thing is that it already happened accidentally many times during missions and bacteria went into space and back home all alive. On the International Space Station, bacteria found on the cliffs of Britain's coast were taken to the exterior of the International Space Station, meaning they were put in a total vacuum. And surprisingly, those bacteria survived 553 days in the vacuum of space before being returned back on Earth. And that is a hell of a rough time, meaning they were exposed to extreme temperature swings between day and night. Radiation, lots of UV light, zero atmospheric pressure, and everything else that comes with the harshness of space. But let's not forget that we also had many probes sent into space and other things. And all of them, despite the cleaning, without a doubt, have some surviving bacteria on them. Who knows for how long have they been alive millions of kilometers away from their home planet. Now the reason why this whole thing could be a problem is because if, for example, we had a mission going to Europa or Enceladus, and the lander there, let's say, would use a drill to go down into the oceans of these moons, then these things, as they would be attached to the drill, would be able to swim away and survive in those oceans. In fact, there are specific bacteria that were tested in the same conditions as present on Enceladus, and the bacteria survived and thrived. They basically have an energy source, and they could potentially kill off what was in those oceans already. Because of that, we call it a contamination, and it could be a problem if, for example, in the future we inspect those oceans, we could find fossils of the organisms that were killed by our Earth life. So as we spread more through space, and as we make more missions, we will be taking our bacteria with us inevitably. And they could cause lots of trouble, not only for us, but for other possible living organisms. So all in all, there are some bacteria which are incredibly hardy and could potentially hatch onto other planets and moons and survive there. Basically, they would become interplanetary species because of the fact that they are so hard to kill.